So today we're checking out these drone footage discoveries. Let's check them out. Number 20, Forgotten Arrows. Mm. If you've gone on a road trip Remember in the these. United States before, or if you've flown a drone pretty high up in some of the most isolated places in the country, then perhaps you've seen several large arrows on the ground. It's easy to spot these massive white arrows as they're big enough to be seen by planes flying high up. In fact, you might even spot some on Google Earth if you know where to look. Now, if you think there's something significant about these arrows, then you're absolutely correct. You see, these aren't randomly painted arrows, but part of aviation history. Way before we relied on radios or the GPS apps on our smartphones, the U.S. Postal Service had this grand idea. After World War I, they used old army planes to deliver mail nationwide. And guess what? These pilots needed something big and noticeable to guide them, especially because the notion of GPS and navigation apps had not been conceived at that point. And so in 1924, the government had these massive arrows constructed about every 10 miles along airmail routes. Painted a vivid yellow, each arrow was accompanied by a 50-foot tower with a spinning light. You could spot these guiding lights even from 10 miles up. However, at the beginning of the second world... I knew it had to be something else besides just the arrow, though. Because could you imagine just trying to look? You're flying a plane and you're trying to look over to see if you see an arrow to make sure you're going in the right direction. I'd be lost. I'd be lost. The war. Radios pretty much replaced these arrows. It was for the better. They were more efficient and more accurate. And so, these arrows were simply left forgotten. I've seen these arrows before, and now that I know their history, seeing them would be a lot more meaningful. So on your next road trip, perhaps you might want to keep your eyes out for these historic arrows. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Woman in a Tree Who would expect to find a woman's body in a hollow tree trunk? No one, that's who. Imagine the construction worker's surprise at the Kern School complex in the heart of Zurich when they found the remains of a Celtic woman. The woman lived in the Iron Age, roughly 2,200 years ago. Now this wasn't just any woman. She was clad in a woolen dress, shawl, and a sheepskin coat. And researchers think she lived quite the lavish life. There's hardly any sign she did much heavy lifting during her time. Further analysis also revealed that she loved sweets, something few people had access to during her time. With bronze bracelets, a fabulous bronze belt chain, and iron accessories, she was definitely someone of high status back in the day. Fun fact, she was a local. Her bones hint that she grew up right there. Imagine seeing the preserved remains of someone who lived in your community a staggering 2,200 years ago. Now what's more interesting is that this Celtic lady wasn't buried alone. Another burial site was found just 260 feet away, hinting that she might have known the man she was buried beside. Mm. While their relationship is still unclear, researchers hope to learn more about the past settlers in the area. Num I like how they can tell by your bones that you lived in this area. How, how, how is that? I, I need to figure that out. How you're able to look at it and, and, re and just go through somebody's bones and sample and run tests and get data and the data tells you, yeah, they lived in this area. Like, I, I've always heard, like, with people who had the ability to, like, climb trees that you could tell by their bone structure that they climbed trees and did different things like that. But to tell that they lived here, that's different. That's new to me. Number 18. Abandoned Cinema. Now, one of the last things you'd expect to see in the middle of the desert is a cinema. But if you wander far enough cinema? on a highway in Sham, Egypt you'll find yourself looking at an open-air cinema under the scorching heat in the middle of the desert. In this place, you'll see rows upon rows of wooden seats, around 700 in total, each adorned with intricate designs, all leading to, well, no screen. Instead, you get the majestic backdrop of the desert hills slowly being kissed goodnight by the setting sun. This is known as the Seventh Art Cinema, the harsh conditions in the desert make this place look like it was built centuries ago, but it was constructed in the 90s. It's the brainchild of Frenchman Diane Edel. Edel, dabbling in drama and acting, had plans to showcase the classic Jurassic Park for the inaugural show. But alas, it never happened. And no one really knows why. It was postponed and was set to be rescheduled, until it wasn't. However, if you do decide to visit this place, then perhaps a good view of the desert will be enough to keep you entertained. 
Number 17. That reminds you of like drive-in movie theaters. You know what I mean? To which I think a few places still have them. Like I'm, I'm not sure where, but um, a few places I think still do have like a drive-in movie theater area. I wouldn't mind going to one of those, man, just for nostalgic purposes to go to a drive, just to say you've been to a drive-in recently. You know what I mean? Stuff like that is pretty cool because it's different and it's not, it's outside of the normal things you would do. Monolith that appeared out of nowhere. In 2020, this shiny monolith was discovered during a routine helicopter flyover by the workers of the Utah Department of Public Safety. Expectedly, a lot of people immediately connected the monolith to extraterrestrial creatures. Some believed that the monolith was a contraption left behind by aliens. But of course, we all know just how far-fetched this sounds. What made the monolith more mysterious was the fact that a few weeks after the monolith appeared in Utah, the same thing occurred in different countries across the world, including Romania and the Congo. Now, three years after this mystery occurred, people believe we finally found the truth. It turns out that the monoliths were some sort of artwork, but to this day, the identity of the artist or artists remains unknown. Number 16. Giant Pink Bunny <laughs> Nestled on a mountain in northern Italy's Piedmont region, there's a bizarre sight that got the attention of internet users several years ago. A gigantic stuffed pink bunny named Hase. This isn't just any bunny, though. Spanning over 200 feet and almost 20 feet high, with a fluffy belly you could nap on, Hase is considered a remarkable art piece. Crafted by a group of artists called Gelatin, this colossal creature isn't just about shock value. The idea was to create a massive art piece for hikers to interact with making their mountain journey a tad bit quirkier. And if you're wondering, yes, you're absolutely allowed to climb and relax on this oversized toy. But, well, that was before. I hate to break it to you, but this giant bunny has now been reduced to nothing. Sad lumps of decaying fabric. This giant rabbit wasn't meant to last forever. The artists intended for it to naturally degrade over time, blending back with nature by 2025. But as early as 2016, the bunny had almost completely decomposed. Mm. Number 15. Viaduct in the I'm middle of- I'm surprised a big fuss wasn't made over that because that's got to be infecting the environment, correct? It's got to be if it's decaying like that. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't hear about that one. The jungle. The viaduct Petrobras, nestled in the heart of Brazil, is one of those architectural marvels that could easily make anyone do a double take. Traditionally, Viaducts are designed to connect two points, usually navigating over natural obstacles like rivers or valleys. However, the viaduct Petrobras diverges from this norm. In a seemingly puzzling design, this structure curves into a semicircular arc and then ends. No continuation, no bridge to another side, just a sudden halt in the air. What's more, it's also in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by nothing but an endless sea of trees. Its unusual design isn't due to some forgotten construction project or an abandoned endeavor. In reality, the Viaduct Petrobras serves as a concrete overpass for pipelines belonging to Petrobras, Brazil's state-controlled oil company. The structure was built to allow the pipeline to cross over a railway line, thus requiring it to elevate and descend without necessarily connecting it to a road or pathway on either side. As unexpected as the viaduct is, it now serves as an important and familiar sight to the locals. But for those who aren't used to seeing the viaduct, it's definitely an unexpected find. Number 14. The Silent People Imagine the going on a solo people. road trip in the middle of the night on a highway. Your car suddenly acts up, and the engine dies. As your car slowly halts, you'll find yourself at the side of the road. You look to your side and see dozens of people standing in the middle of the field. I bet you would have a mini heart attack. I know you would. However, this is actually a familiar sight for the locals of Finland. You see, in the serene landscape of Finland, amidst the vast expanses of its northern fields, stands this art installation known as the Silent People. The Silent People comprise hundreds of scarecrow-like figures positioned uniformly in rows and columns. These figures stand motionless, facing the oncoming road, resembling a still army or a gathering of spectators at a never-ending event. Each they figure- should turn that into like a haunted forest, man. <laughs> Imagine running through that at night, have them like lit up with different things, candles, different kind of different things to light them up. 
the battery candles, not the fire candles. I ain't trying to burn down the field or nothing like that. But imagine that, man. Bring back haunted forests. Bring back the haunted forest, man. Like, I miss those. Oh, my God. This would be perfect for one, man. <laughs> All you would hear were screams coming from this forest. Here is crafted from wooden poles, dressed in actual clothes, with a head made of peat. Over time, these clothes have weathered various elements, adding an antique, almost haunting charm to the installation. Okay. Ray Okella, the artist behind this masterpiece, created the silent people in the late 20th century. While the true inspiration and intent behind the installation remain a mystery, as Kella has kept them close to his chest, many theories and interpretations have surfaced over the years. Some believe the silent people represent the Finnish soul, steadfast, introspective, and deeply connected to nature. The figures, despite being inanimate, evoke a myriad of emotions in the observer. However, the general consensus is that the scarecrows are quite terrifying to see for the first time. Others interpret the installation as a commentary on societal norms and the human tendency to conform. The figures, while distinct in their attire, stand uniformly echoing the often unspoken societal pressures of conformity and the suppression of individuality. Yet, there are also those who believe that the silent people stand as an homage to the land itself. The installation's location in Suomasalmi, amidst vast fields and under the expansive Nordic sky, plays a significant role in its impact. Number 13. Mysterious Spiral So you're cruising on Google Earth, browsing over vast deserts, and BAM! You stumble upon this weird, expansive spiral of holes and cones in the Egyptian desert. It kind of resembles a massive crop circle or an ancient rune seen in those adventure movies. The pattern is mesmerizing, with circles that seem to go on forever, drawing you into its center. Now, I know we we kind of have an idea of what these things mean now, and it's kind of moved far from our theories of it being some kind of alien thing or something like that, but I still think alien insignia or something like that bro. <laughs> like alien spacecraft imprint something like I, I just can't shake that if you were flying overhead you'd see a vast piece of art stretching over a considerable chunk of the desert looking somewhat out of this world the sight is so peculiar that it's no surprise people came up with wild speculations with some believing it was built by aliens others claimed it was part of a forgotten desert ritual a long-lost civilization or gateways to other dimensions. There were talks of mystical energies and desert entities using this as their terrestrial marker. And of course, any massive and unexplained geometric formation is bound to have its fair share of conspiracy theories, right? However, the truth is a bit more anticlimactic. In reality, this thing is known as the Desert Breath, created in 1997 by a team of artists and architects, Danae Stratow, Alexandra Stratow, and Stella Constantinidis, Desert breath spans 100,000 square meters in the desert. It's made up of 89 protruding cones and their corresponding depressions in the ground, forming a precise and captivating spiral. The entire project was designed to slowly erode over time, making it a living piece of art that changes as the desert reclaims its space. So while it might be a tad disappointing to debunk the extraterrestrial theories, the truth of desert breath is equally fascinating. Number 12. UFO Recently, a UFO enthusiast shared a photo of an alleged UFO he found in Romania. It was found in the middle of nowhere, partially hidden beneath the trees. But of course, this bizarre sighting attracted skeptics who claimed that this alleged flying saucer could easily be anything. It could be a structure, or more logically, a water tank. It may it can be an Airbnb. People seem to be doing that a lot lately. You know what I mean? Make design these Airbnbs that look like UFOs. I definitely want to go to one, though. <laughs> sense, though. Why would anyone park a flying saucer out in the open like that when any plane or drone Park. could easily spot it? <laughs> so perhaps this is just a water tank that looks an awful lot like an alien spacecraft. Number 11. World War II bomb. Oh, no. In 2017, Locals in the municipality of Duplek, northern Slovenia, got the scare of a lifetime when they were forced to evacuate because of a bomb scare. But this wasn't just any bomb. It was a massive 550-pound American bomb from World War II. The tale takes an unexpected twist when you discover how it was found. I know. I know exactly what you're thinking. 
So how many more of those could be out there? How many more of those could be just randomly placed somewhere, maybe where we live? Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm thinking that too. Father, out playing a treasure hunt game with his kids using a metal detector, stumbled upon this ancient explosive. Wow. Well, they didn't know that it was something dangerous, or else they wouldn't have taken it home. Now this should serve as a warning for amateur metal detectorists out there. You see, the vast United States- And don't, uh, they shouldn't feel bad, because I probably would have did the same thing too, especially when you don't know something it, what it is, and you think you found something valuable. Oh yeah, load this thing up, let's take it to the house. And then I'd probably be driving recklessly and be bouncing off. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that could have been very bad. State's landscape is peppered with hidden dormant remnants of World War II, including unexploded bombs. Beneath the soil, in certain regions, there's a possibility that these silent, deadly remnants are waiting. Over the years, several of these devices have been discovered, sometimes in the least expected places. A construction crew might dig up an old artillery shell while laying the foundation for a new building, or a farmer might come across a grenade while plowing fields. Now, this isn't to cause alarm or suggest there's an impending explosion lurking around every corner. Most of these dormant weapons are safely deep below, and discovery is relatively rare. However, when they are found, it's important to call the authorities so a bomb squad can quickly eliminate and remove the bomb without any risks. Number 10. Classic cars and a plane in the middle of the forest. Car enthusiasts out there, you just might like this next discovery. In a secluded forest, an explorer uncovered a mysterious graveyard, but not the kind you'd expect. Nestled amidst the trees were 50 classic cars and, wait for it, a plane. This isn't your typical rusting junkyard. Among the treasures were a 1950 Willys M38 Jeep, a luxurious 1950 Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn, and the elegant 1950 Jaguar XK120, as shown in our featured image. And if cars weren't surprising enough, there's a British K6 phone booth from, you guessed it, 1950, and even a piece of the Berlin Wall. While the plane amidst the vehicles remains unidentified, it's evident from its propellers that it never took to the skies. Now before you jump to conclusions, this isn't a case of forgotten relics. This entire setup is an intentional work of art by Michael Froelich, a German millionaire passionate about electric sports cars and classic vehicles. To commemorate his 50th birthday in 2000, the man procured 50 cars from 1950, his birth year, and deliberately placed them in this forest. That's right, he bought several expensive vehicles for fun and left them to be eaten away by nature as a form of natural art. Number 9. Plane Apartment Venturing deep into the green expanses of Hillsboro, Oregon, you'd expect the usual, trees, birds, maybe a hidden stream or two. But what you might not expect is a massive Boeing 727 grounded, not gearing up for flight, but set up as a one-of-a-kind dwelling. This isn't some forgotten aircraft wreck or a pop-up museum. Nope, it's someone's home, namely, a gentleman named Bruce Campbell. Most of us, when thinking of a cozy nest or dream home, wouldn't really picture an old commercial airliner. But Bruce did. With over 1,000 square feet of space, the plane isn't cramped. Sure, there are remnants of its flying days, overhead compartments, the cockpit, and even some of the original seating. But then there's the makeshift kitchen, a bathroom you that- actually got more room in there than I would thought. I would think it'd be so narrow that that would probably be the most aggravating part, but let me see. Pull up. Sure, there are remnants of its fly flying days, that. overhead compartments, the cockpit, and even some of the original seating. Yeah, this view right here. It actually got more room than I, I'd expect. I'd expect. So, yeah, it's not that bad. If you don't mind having, like, the airplane feel, I think it's pretty cool that he, he had that idea and, and created this. But then there's the makeshift kitchen, a bathroom that won't make you feel cramped, and a transparent floor that reveals the craft's complex underbelly. Natural light pours in from the windows, making the place feel both expansive and, weirdly enough, homey. Stumbling upon Bruce Campbell's airplane home might make you do a double take, but other than that, exploring this plane home is surely a wonder. Number 8. A Dooms- I like it. Now, depending on how it does with, like, the cold, if you gotta insulate it the right way, and you can handle, like, the winters and stuff like that, 
and he got some way to make it through the summers, I, I ain't mad at him for that one. Day Vault Venturing deep into the icy realms of Svalbard, Norway, far past where most travelers dare to tread, a massive structure is the last thing one would expect to see. Now upon oh, first seeing this vault. structure, you might think it's a secret base, or an art installation, or perhaps a billionaire's weird choice of a townhouse. The location is surreal to begin with. Why would anyone build something so sophisticated and seemingly important in a place where polar bears roam, and the cold is relentless? It's not exactly next door to a coffee shop. And then there's that name, which sounds like it's straight out of a science fiction novel, the Doomsday Vault. And believe me, it's as important as it sounds. The Doomsday Very. Vault, or to give it its proper title, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, is humanity's insurance policy against agricultural calamities. Yes, it's less about the end of times and more about their continuation. Inside this chilly fortress lies a treasure trove not of gold or precious gems, but of seeds, millions of them. These seeds are samples from virtually every corner of the globe, safeguarded against anything that could destroy our planet's biodiversity. Through this vault, should a crucial crop variety be wiped out elsewhere, a backup is safely stored in this frosty bank. But why such a remote, icy location? Well, it's brilliantly strategic. The permafrost ensures the seeds remain frozen. Even without power, the vault's high altitude means it will stay dry even if all ice were to melt. And its remoteness? That ensures minimal human interference. Number 7. Now, I hope each one of those has instructions in the box. Because <laughs> a person like me is going to need it. I don't have a green thumb and know how to plant and do all that type of stuff. So I'm going to need step-by-step -step instructions and guidance for me to, to do that, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Imagine... You finally making it there, finally finding the seeds, and then not knowing what to do with them. Oh, that, that would suck so bad. Cavern of Lost Souls Imagine navigating the rugged terrains of North Wales, perhaps a bit off the beaten path because your trusty map has led you astray, or more realistically, you've lost mobile service. Then you stumble upon a cave that looks like something out of a dystopian universe a flooded mine filled with rusted and out-of-commission cars. It's a bizarre junkyard made out of an old slate mine. This submerged automotive graveyard is known as the Cavern of Lost Souls. Now you're probably wondering just how the vehicles got there to begin with. Well, you see, it's actually quite simple. The slate mine, namely the Garwin State Mine, opened in the early 1800s and operated until 1906. However, the lack of demand for slate led to its closure. It was opened several more times, only to be permanently closed in 1971. Over time, this secluded spot became an unofficial dumping ground. Number 6. The Makes McDermott sense. Castle Alright, for those of you out there dreaming of living the royal life, owning a castle, and maybe ruling a small imaginary kingdom from your stone-clad tower, the McDermott Castle would be a sight to see. Hidden amidst the sprawling landscape of Ireland, upon an island in Loch Key to be precise, stands a structure that feels plucked straight out of a fairy tale, or, you know, that medieval-themed show everyone binged a few years back? It's the McDermott Castle. The original castle on this site was built way back in the 12th century, but of course, as is the case with many castles, invasions and sieges weren't uncommon. It faced battles, reconstructions, and at some points, Mother Nature herself when the waters of Loch Key rose to reclaim parts of the land. In the 19th century, a folly, a decorative and often whimsical architectural structure with no practical purpose was added to the castle. However, to this day, it stands as a lonely structure in the middle of an empty island, embodying the charm of an era when such eccentric additions were in vogue. Travelers are captivated by the enchanting journey of reaching McDermott Castle by boat. Exploring the historic ruins while enjoying serene boat rides creates a truly unforgettable and immersive experience. Number 5. Car Graveyard have you ever been on a scenic drive through the Belgian countryside, expecting to see the usual? Picturesque villages, winding roads, maybe a few deer prancing by? But then, as you're humming to that road trip playlist, you come across a vast land with several abandoned cars. This is the Chatelon Car Graveyard. Nestled deep within a forest in the small village of Chatelon are vintage cars slowly being eaten away by nature. Now there's no clear answer as to where these came from. One version goes that these cars were left behind by American soldiers after World War II 
unable to ship them back and hoping to retrieve them later. But as years turned into decades, nature began its slow claim. However, some say it was just a good old-fashioned dump where unwanted vehicles from nearby villages found their final resting place. Regardless of its origins, the Chatelon Car Graveyard became a legend, a magnet for photographers, urban explorers, and curious travelers. Number 4. The Last House in Holland Island Amid the sprawling waters of Chesapeake Bay, Maryland, stands a lone structure, the last house on Holland Island. It's an almost unexpected sight. Holland Island was once a thriving community in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Families built their lives on this patch of land, with churches, a school, and the comforting hum of daily life. But nature, as it often does, began to stake its claim. Erosion started nibbling at the edges, pulling the land back into the watery embrace of the bay. Families, one by one, began to leave, relocating their homes or simply abandoning them to time and tide. By the 20th century's close, most of the island had been swallowed by the bay, houses and all. But one house remains to this day, even though no one lives on the island anymore. Again, I don't want to disappoint you, but in 2010, this house finally collapsed and succumbed to the rising water. Even so, its legacy remains. Number 3. Prada Store in the Desert Created in 2005 by artists Elm Green and Dragset, Prada Marfa is a statement on consumer culture against the stark contrast of the Texan wilderness. It's a structure that challenges preconceptions, provoking questions about luxury, art, and the environment. For the unsuspecting traveler, stumbling upon Prada Marfa is like diving into a Salvador Dali painting. The juxtaposition of high fashion with the rugged desert landscape is surreal. Just imagine driving through the desert and then suddenly you see a luxury store. Anyone would think they're hallucinating because of how unexpected this is. There's definitely no need for a luxury store to exist in a desert. Who would even stop by here? The occasional alien visitor, I guess. Just Thieves? You put a Prada store out there, that stuff in there ain't real. Can't be real no more because I think this place was robbed before. But yeah, you put some expensive Pradas out in the middle of nowhere, you know who you're going to be visited by? Thieves. They're going to tear that store open, take all that stuff out of there, bro. I'm telling you, man. You know what I mean? I think that happened to them and they had to had to go back and like put like replicas or fakes or whatever in there. Something that was less expensive. Just kidding. Over the years, Prada Marfa has become a must-visit spot for art enthusiasts, Instagrammers, and curious passerby. So if you ever find yourself cruising the Texan roads and out of the blue, you spot a Prada store in the middle of nowhere. Remember, it's not the heat playing tricks on your mind, it's art. Number 2. Mystery Spot Deep in the woods of Gold Hill, Oregon, there's a spot where the usual laws of physics and reason seem to take a back seat, almost like they're on a coffee break. Welcome to the Oregon Vortex, a place that has left visitors scratching their heads and doubting their senses for decades. Finally, somebody says where this is, Oregon. All right, now I know. I've been trying to figure out where this place is located. Seen it on a few videos, but um, some of the videos didn't have the location of where this was actually. They just described the place. Now I know where it's at now. Cool. Nestled amidst the lush Pacific Northwest greenery, the Oregon Vortex is a circular area of around 165 feet in diameter, where peculiar, unexplainable phenomena seem to be the norm. Here, Balls appear to roll uphill, broomsticks stand on end without support, and people seem to grow and shrink based on their position within the circle. There's also the House of Mystery, a wooden structure found within the vortex, leaning at odd angles, yet remaining standing, challenging the pull of gravity. There are different explanations behind this mysterious phenomena. Some say it's a place of powerful earth energies or magnetic fields. Others speculate about parallel universes, while a few even whisper about ancient Native American legends, suggesting the land is forbidden. Skeptics, of course, have their own take, offering optical illusions and perspective misinterpretations. However, there's no agreed conclusion to this day, so if any of you have any theories, comment them down below so I can read them. And now it's time I'm for- I have to go there and see. I can make my theories when I go there and come back and be like, ah, y'all, you ain't gotta worry about it. That's a hoax. They set it up like that. It's designed to do all that type of stuff. Or, <laughs> y'all gotta get up there ASAP. For today's topic, a videographer hoped to document his first solo road trip 
and decided to fly his drone to get a picturesque and beautiful shot of the entire landscape. However, he saw something completely unexpected. The drone makes a chilling discovery in the middle of nowhere by accident. In the footage, he saw several tanks land up in neat rows. It was definitely an unexpected sight, and the man didn't expect to see the armored vehicles in the middle of a vast desert. Now what made this experience more terrifying was the fact that he also saw a person looking up at the drone. He had been caught, and the drone operator had no choice but to leave the perimeter as soon as possible without getting answers. What do you think he saw? Number 1. Massive Boneyard In Tucson, Arizona, there's a location that stands in stark contrast to the surrounding desert landscape, the davis monthan Air Force Base's Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, or simply a marg. It's commonly known as the Boneyard, with over 2,600 acres. This facility is the final resting place for thousands of military aircraft. Rows upon rows of planes are parked here, creating a vast sea of metal wings and fuselages under the scorching heat of the sun. Established after World War II, the Boneyard takes advantage of Arizona's dry climate to prevent rust and deterioration, making it an ideal location for preserving aircraft. While many planes are kept for potential future use or to be used as parts for active aircraft, others are dismantled and recycled. For those driving by or getting an aerial view, the site is both impressive and unexpected. If you ever find yourself in the Tucson area, the Boneyard offers guided tours. It's definitely worth it if you've been fascinated with planes for a long time. Which of these unexpected- Look like a huge outdoor museum for planes, bro. I, I definitely like to go. That's the only way you get me on a plane anyway. Right there. I get on those because I know they ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? But um, listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section and let me know what you thought about some of these discoveries, man. And stick around and stay tuned. Till the next one, I'm gone.